So I was just watching some TV um, on cable. I was watching Nat Geo, and Ashley Judd had uh, was narrating a documentary that she made uh, during her three-week trip to India, where she was there to organize fundraising and spread awareness for the work that an NGO called PSI is doing in um, providing services for people who are infected with HIV, providing education uh, about protecting oneself from HIV in third world countries. Um, worthwhile project. I think, um, I think it's good. A lot of young women are being marginalized in um, developing countries. And uh, there's very, because of the stigma and the shame uh, associated with anything related to sexuality, uh, it's, it's, it's not talked about, it's not discussed, especially in any country that was dominated by British uh, sensibilities for any length of time. Here in Hawaii, um, the missionaries um, instilled such a morality that the local people, Hawaiian people, are much more moral by and large um, than people on the mainland, I've noticed, as a generalization. Not that being chained to some objective sense of morality is a positive thing, because when you know what right rightness is supposed to look like, then you are trapped in superficial appearances. And rightness that transcends relative notions of right and wrong, good and evil, correct or incorrect, human existence even. Rightness that is right because it is the very source and foundation of all being, all life, all existence. That's important to, to recognize that as who one is inside, subjectively. And this often is not done. Know thyself and then, like, <clears throat> night must follow a day, you can't be false to another. But know thyself is not followed, or it's given some lip service, and oh yeah, okay, I know myself. And then people go on to try to save the world try to do service in the world, to bring about positive changes in politics. They go politicking to make changes that they would like to see in the world, which you would think would be a positive thing, right, to help make positive changes. But when the individual mind is dominated by desire and fear, and it takes some honesty sometimes to honestly ask oneself what this life is standing for in practice. And to notice that uh, rationalizations will arise if we are transgressing our own inner sense or conscience. And so the problem with going forth and saving the world when one has not first truly known thyself inside is that fear and desire, and it's often in a state of denial that this is going on, but fear and desire are dominating the individual mind. And so... There is a conflict of interest in any pursuit where you go out and try to save somebody. And what you are essentially trying to do, you can't really help anybody by handing them material uh, help. You know, you give them 20 bucks, 100 bucks, 1,000 bucks, 100,000 bucks. Some people you give them a million bucks, like some of the lottery winners, and they are broke within a year or two, worse off than they were before. To help anybody 
is to help them burn, put an end to, transcend, see through, and move beyond the habits of thinking and feeling that have put them in those situations in the first place. And somebody who has not realized the self is not qualified to teach others who are dominated by desire and fear how not to be dominated by desire and fear. Wouldn't even be able to have a conversation like this about it doesn't even understand it to that degree. There's too much denial about, I don't got any fear. I don't got any go. I don't, you know, I'm not that attached to anything. I'm, I'm arrived, you know. Um, ego preserva preservation strategies of the individual mind. The job of the individual mind, ego, is to make us into something so we think we are something and if you notice when you are getting in very heated arguments with others especially if they're very close to you in your life next time you get in an argument with your spouse or partner or whatever uh, stop as soon as you notice that you're losing your temper ask yourself if you are trying to defend some idea of who you think you are. Ask that question and really look. And in that, often there comes some clarity and some peace of mind in that situation and diffuses the entire situation. Then you could freak your partner out because they know you. They know how you're going to react. They know where this goes. They've seen it before. But suddenly, you really don't care. It doesn't touch you. You no longer are defending some idea of who you think you are. That's no longer important. You're no longer dominated by desire and fear. And the source of this desire and this fear, the reason for this domination is what we are talking about. Thinking you know yourself to be an object. Believing the thought, I am a something, even if it's an abstraction called a system, whatever it is that you know all about, your ideas about that thing and what it means in relation to other things. If you know yourself to be anything, then you don't know yourself. Knowing yourself as a thing is the only thing that stops anybody from realizing subjectively that you cannot be described in words or intellectual concepts, yet you are here, now, always, needing nothing, touched by nothing, afraid of nothing. Everything comes and goes. Everything comes and goes. Be ruthless about this. Everything. You remain here. Always. You are this here-ness. Forever. You've always been here. You will always be here, regardless of what comes, changes, what goes. And everything that appears will disappear. And in that realization, it is possible to reach out to another and interrupt the habit that repeatedly puts one in the situation of suffering. It's possible but not from a place of fear and denial and martyrdom, victimization, or condemnation, blame, 
resentment. You're just causing more trouble. You need to leave it alone. Come back when you're clear. And if you're clear, you are free to act in the world as you do. Your body is free to fulfill its destiny. What do you care? Really, what do you care? You're unattached. And from that place of detachment, from that place of detachment, ironically, when you no longer care what happens, you can make a real difference in the lives of the others. Namaste.